this problem they have said that the three sides of a right angle triangle are in GP. So let me just draw a right angle triangle. Now the sides of this right angle triangle are in GP. Let me say this side is A. So this side is AR and this side will be AR square, right? Where R is greater than 1 in this case. Now, the two acute angles are alpha and beta. Let us say this angle is alpha and this angle is beta. Is it clear? Now, from the Pythagoras theorem, we can say that A square plus A square R square equals to AR square whole square. So, that gives you 1 plus R square equals to R to the power 4. So, that implies r to the power 4 minus r square minus 1 equals to 0. So now if I solve it by Sridhar Acharya's method, so we are getting r square as minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So that gives us 1 plus minus root 5 by 2. Since r square is positive, therefore, r square can be written as root 5 plus 1 by 2 minus sign I have rejected. Therefore, your r becomes under root root 5 plus 1 divided by 2. Is this much clear to all of you? Now you see tan alpha is basically ar by a so that gives you only r. So which is nothing but under root, root 5 plus 1 divided by 2. That's it. And your tan beta will be a divided by a r. So that gives you 1 by r which is equals to under root 2 divided by root 5 plus 1. So let me just rationalize it to get root over of root 5 minus 1 divided by 2. Therefore, the option B is correct in this problem. Is it clear? Again, it's a standard problem. No complex conception is involved in it. So, from that point, the sum is moderate. Okay, let us now move for the next problem. Here, they have given us to find out the value of x and the given equation is So, we are having, so from here we can write, let us assume that 2 to the power 1 by x is p square. So, we are having, is this clear? So, from here we can say, now if we factorize we are going to get, so either p is 4 or p is 2. When p is 4, we can write 2 to the power 1 by x is 16, which is 2 to the power 4. So, from here we can say 1 by x equals to 4 implies x is equals to 1 by 4. That's it. Is it clear to all of you? Okay. When p is 2, then 2 to the power 1 by x will be equals to 4, which is 2 square. So, that implies 1 by x is 2 implies x is half. Therefore, the values of x will be 1 by 4 or half. Hence, in this problem, option B is the correct one. Again, this is a very normal sum. No complexity is involved in it. Okay, let us move for the next problem. Here, they have said that the argument of the complex number z is greater than 0. Now, here the argument that is involved is all principal value. Since argument of z is greater than 0, two cases can be considered. One is, let me say, the complex number z is in the first quadrant. Hence, the argument, if this angle is theta, then argument of z is greater than 0. So, minus z will be 
Is it clear? So this angle is again theta. Therefore, argument of minus z is minus pi plus theta. Am I correct? And argument of z in this case is theta. Therefore, argument of z minus argument of minus z will be theta minus minus pi plus theta. If I open the bracket, we are going to get equals to pi. Is it clear? Now, it can also happen that your z is in the third quadrant. If this is z, let us assume this angle is theta. Therefore, argument of z in the second case, it will be minus pi plus theta. Am I correct? And your minus z will be somewhere in the first quadrant here. This angle is again theta. So, argument of minus z in this case will be theta only. Is it clear? Therefore, the required value is this can be written as minus pi plus theta minus theta. So, that gives you minus pi. Now, here the students will do the mistake. They will choose the option B because we are getting the argument z minus argument of minus z is plus minus pi. So, they will choose the option B, but they will forget to see the thing which is given in the question that we need only the principal value of the argument. We know that the principal value of the argument always lies between minus pi and pi. Okay, so from that perspective, we will say the required value of the argument is nothing but pi. It's not minus pi. Minus pi has to be rejected because it is not falling in the principal value of the argument. Is it clear? So from that point, option C is correct. Is it clear? So this question is again a moderate sum. This question in a long time back, it came in IIT JE. This question is easy if you know the conception of principal value of argument. Okay, let us move for the next problem. In this problem, we have to find out the real angle theta which satisfies the given condition. Now, every term in the given expression, if we write it in the Euler's form, it will be, you know the Euler's form, e to the power i theta can be written as cos theta plus iota sin theta. This is the Euler's form, okay? Therefore, our equation becomes e to the power i theta into e to the power i 2 theta this thing goes on. So, e to the power i in theta, which is equals to 1. That implies, so from here we are getting, therefore the real part will become, which is equals to 1, that equals to cos of 0. So, from there we can write, The general solution as 2k pi where k belongs to any integer. So theta is 4k pi by n into n plus 1. Is it clear? Therefore, our option B is correct. This question from my point of view is a moderate sum. Is it clear?